thought I thought I thought I'd do the awakening today with the cats. Um just to lighten the load a little bit because it's so calming and peaceful. Peace this is peace and he's peaceful like his name. And this is Ellie when she jumps up. Come on Ellie. Come on look, you're on camera. Look. <laughs> anyway, she usually comes and jumps on my lap. So today, um I wanted to talk about today about nature and I just got back from the beautiful garden. I call it the garden now rather than the allotment with the shed and the green everywhere where we planted little plants and nurturing them. And I was just lying there uh, after I did some gardening and I just felt so relaxed. I felt so good. I, I just wanted to stay there and not come back. And it was just so beautiful. And I was thinking about when I was a child, especially if you're a girl, you're a girl. We learned one of the, my favorite stories was the story of Heidi, the little girl Heidi, um, who lived with her grandfather in the mountains in Switzerland. And she had a friend called Clara. I'll tell you in a minute why I'm telling you this. Uh, she had a friend called Clara. And um, Clara was very ill, it's the darkness. She was ill, she, her body was very weak. Um, she couldn't walk properly. She wasn't happy. I'm trying to get Ellie to sit on my lap. Come on, Ellie. Girl. She's sitting on the floor watching the stuff. And um, basically, she was very weak. And she came to stay with, um, I think she was her cousin, with Heidi and the grandfather. And I remember when she turned up that they said she was very weak and sick and she couldn't walk and Heidi was running up and down the hills and living in nature and eating healthy food and natural food from nature basically, you know, the way things used to be and the way we're going back. And um, basically Clara started to settle in with the family, with, with the grandfather and Heidi and so, and her health started to improve, and I remember that. I remember I was only little, and I remember Heidi was the story that, you know, you always read that as a little girl. And she, and bit by bit, Clara started to get stronger and stronger. One day she got out of her wheelchair, and she was walking, and, and it kind of dawned on me. I don't think Ellie's going to come and sit with us now. <laughs> it kind of dawned on me, they're very independent. They don't always like to sit on your lap, do they, these two? Uh, only when they want something. <laughs> so it kind of dawned on me that um, basically what I'm trying to say is that um, because Clara had nature and the beauty and good food and love and fresh air, there she was getting well getting stronger, her bones were getting stronger, she was walking because she was eating good food and she was in the fresh air and having oxygen in nature. Isn't that interesting that you kind of taught that story when you were a kid and I, I remember it very well when I was a little girl and it stuck in my mind, it really did stick in my mind and I was talking to someone about the darkness at the moment where they don't let elderly people go out into the fresh air and the sun and they're eating so much rubbish and they're taking their families away from them and that is what the darkness is it, it just basically stops the growth the, the joy inside and people get sick and, and then they die you know it's um it, it, this is the darkness that i'm talking about and you know the thing is that i as I say, I'm a Jew and I was brought up and I learned everything there was to learn about the Holocaust. It was my education from about the age of five. That's how it is. But to a certain extent, I'm very grateful for that because it shows me the progression and I know why I need to stand up and say I do not consent now and why we need to come together into the light by exposing the darkness because what they did to the Jews is very similar 
to what they're doing now. Very, very similar. You know, when they when they took the families away from the people I worked with in the residential homes, telling them there was a serious virus, all the alarm bells started to go off in me, and I thought, how are they going to survive? They're going to be miserable. They've got nothing. And then they sacked me, and I, they won't bring in entertainment because they won't pay anything because they're so tight. And, and bit by bit, they're killing off these people, charging them a £1,000 a week because they, they don't want them anymore. And then I heard about the fact that they were doing what they're doing to my black friends, sending these letters for them to come and have this COVID pneumonia thing, which is a load of rubbish, and you need to know that. Don't let that happen to your friends or your family if you are black. Don't touch it. it it's a load of rubbish and it's a lie and it's an experiment. It, you're just a guinea pig to them. And then I heard that what they're doing to the children and bit by bit I started to realise, well, they've done it already. They did it in the concentration camps. And because we didn't have the internet, we didn't have social media, we didn't have anything. We, we couldn't understand or know anything until the shock of when the soldiers went in and saw the absolute tragedy, the, the absolute decimation, uh, the absolute destruction of a whole race nearly by these lunatics. And they're doing it again. They're doing it again. And the minute they locked us down, it, uh, they, that was it for me. The light bulb was loud and clear, and I thought, well, I'll hang on a second. We're back in 1930s Germany. Well, so they do the track and trace thing and trying to, you know, get you to snitch on people. They did that. If you had a Jewish friend, you had to tell where that friend was or else they would arrest you. The social distancing, everything. They're doing it again, and, and but the beauty of it is they can't do it the way they want to because we're awake. And every day another person awakes, another person awakes, another person wakes up, another person becomes like Bills, and they can't do it to the level that they wanted to. Now their plans were so sick. Everything they experimented on the Jews and then they carried on with mockingbirds. Everything they did when they carried on with, sorry, they carried on with paperclip, not mockingbirds, the media, paperclip with the CIA, where they were doing MK Ultra on innocent people, particularly army, Hollywood, actors, getting them to such a level where they didn't feel anything else anymore, and they did exactly what they were told. They were just like little soldiers. And that's why you see Hollywood stars taking the clothes off. That's why you had Brooke Shields at 10 years old or 11 years old, naked in a bath. Because they were already propagating and experimenting on these poor people, taking away their self-esteem, but they were doing it. And then they used the media, and they carried on the experimentations that Mengele was doing. Nothing ended. Nothing ended. And then Big Pharma came along. And they carried on experimenting on you as guinea pigs. They gave us all cancer. They lied to us about cancer. They told you cancer is serious. They messed with your head. And the mind is so powerful. So we became terrified of something like a flu bug. Cancer is apparently easier to heal, I've heard, than candida. This is what I've been told by the, the experts. Now, the light is that we got the internet. Now, how the hell we got the internet from that lot, something that loves us, obviously gave us the internet, and that's because there was something that loves us, that takes care of us. Now, from my own personal life here, I have never been a really strong believer in God, because I didn't have a good life, and I thought that God didn't love me, and my father always believed in the hand of God, and he gave me examples, it's in the book, um, his book that I wrote with him, A Cast Has Nine Lights, which I might release at some point and do it on the book show. But anyway, um, I didn't believe in God. I was brought up to believe that God was this man in the sky, and if you were bad, you got punished, if you were good. He was writing down everything you did. This big man with a big white beard, 
Now, over the years, obviously I've changed my whole concept of God. God is inside us. God is you and me connecting together. God is when Deza went out there and said, you're not doing this to our kids, you know? God is all of that. <laughs> God is when you go, I go and I get an allotment and I grow. I grow my beautiful, I start to grow fruit, trees. And today it dawned on me that for the last couple of years, me and my husband have been trying to move out of this particular area. We wanted, I wanted a bigger house. I wanted more space to breathe, a garden, somewhere for me to run around and the cats and to bring friends around because we live in a one bedroom tiny house, getting on each other's nerves. I wanted more than this for what we were paying. Now it didn't happen. The whole of last year I had coaching and all I did was visualize this house. All I did was ask for this house, believe in this house. It never came. Never came. For nearly eight months of coaching, and I thought, it's not going to happen. Something doesn't care about us. Something doesn't love us. Doesn't want us out of here. But to, you know what? Today I found out from my husband that the only reason we were given this beautiful, huge piece of land, half an acre, for twenty pounds a year, where we can grow fruits, vegetables, flowers. And also um, a, a little shed where I could sit in and do Baba Gorsa and whatever, or relax and, and just lie there in the sun if I don't want to do much work. And trees and butterflies and bees. A massive, massive garden of Eden is because we stayed here in this area. We nearly didn't get it because they said, oh, you're not really in the parish council but then they gave it to us do you see what i mean now could it be that if we just sit there and trust and do our work and carry on doing our work yes and getting ourselves to the level that we are ready to have this hour in this hour because we're not ready yet we have to go out and we have to annihilate whatever is coming between us and this hour in this hour it's not just what's out there it's what's in here our own stuff we have to forgive, we have to move on, we have to do our own work. So we're not ready to pick up that beautiful world that's coming. We're not ready. Because we, it's not just that we're not ready, something knows that it's coming. Something that gave me this beautiful garden now, I'm not going to call it an allotment, because it's my garden, it's my peace, my, I can't wait to go back there now and just lie on the ground with the flowers and just look up at the sky and breathe. I've got this big bean bag that protects my neck and my back because I do have a lot of problems, as you know, so I've got something behind my neck. <laughs> so what if this is all happening for a reason? Okay? We're not ready or something is saying to you, it's coming, the Sarah and the Sarah are coming, the Sarah and the Sarah are coming, and if you don't know what that is, check the questions and answers that I give you. It means that the world is changing. It means we're going to get this beautiful utopian world we deserve. But in order to get it, you've got to do your work. First of all, you've got to uproot. It's like a garden. You've got to get the shit and the, and, and the bad stuff out of the garden in order to plant your new seeds. And there's a lot of stuff that we ourselves have created. We promote fear. We haven't forgiven. We hardened our hearts. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that, that there are bad seeds and they need to be uprooted and gone. And you know what I'm talking about. But I'm also talking about you and me. I'm talking about you and me. And if I had trusted that the reason we couldn't move was because we were going to be given that beautiful space for £20 a year, then maybe, think, you know, that I could do that now and believe that everything is coming up, everything is coming up, everything is uprooted, we are uprooting it, we are uprooting it, and I was uprooting all my beliefs, all my negative beliefs, and at some point, something said, you're right, it's time, we're going to give it to you, and they gave it to us. Okay, so another example I'm going to give you, because people said that I am accurate, I am clear, and cl clarify things, 
I mean, do you understand what I'm talking about? Is look at your life sometimes and think, don't think this is shit. Think this is a lesson to be learned to move on. Because um, when we couldn't move for a long time, we were given a bungalow after eight months. We had to move out of the home that I didn't want to move out of. I was attached to. I didn't want to move. And then at some point, you got a bungalow. Totally by coincidence. Now, a year later, I ended up having an accident. I was in the water. So what I'm saying to you, could it be that whoever gave us that bungalow didn't, give us, didn't keep me in that house upstairs, downstairs, knew that I was going to have that accident? Could it be that something's already written and they know, something knows, something that loves you, it's protecting you all the time with love. It's also in your intuition. And so I'm saying to you, if you are looking at the mess out there and you're thinking this is, uh, we're all going to die, this is nonsense, we're not. If you look at the mess out there um, and you think this is terrible, this is the work of the devil, nothing good is coming, maybe, like I did last year, I got to the level of writing letters and I was going to leave the planet. That's how bad things got to me really last year, June, July. And then I took on some coaching and things started to improve and I started to get money and to earn a living, but then everything went with the lockdown and, and I picked up living on TV. So you see progression, progression, progression. Maybe you could do something similar. Take a breath, look at what's happening and say, you know better than I do. <laughs> like, fiddle on the roof, <laughs> you know? You know better than I do. God loves inside of you, inside of me, inside of peace, the cat, look at him, so peaceful. Inside of Ellie over there relaxing. Every single one of us, as long as you're human and not that lost, you are not human, don't care what you say, they're not, that's how I feel, no empathy, no love, no compassion. They're stupid and we are winning because of that. Look inside you and think, could it be that I was given this lesson in order to move on, in order to forgive myself and others, in order to be ready for this hour and this hour. Okay, does that make sense? So that's the awakening today. Let's have a look at, uh, how does they say, because I've got an interview at five o'clock, with the lovely Steve Goff, who is a patron for Living on TV Theatre, always has been on my side. BAFTA winning director, wonderful friend, also Unity Advisor and Prayer Line. So I'm going to do a fantastic interview on the art show. So, it's upside down, let people go. Let people go. Today you chose a card your intuition directed you to. If you love something, let it go, and if it's meant to be, it will return to you. There's now people in your life that are hurting you, that are not there for you, or just those people, the roots that we are uprooting in this world, that are destroying our beautiful seeds, our little babies, our innocence. They need to go. The system needs to go. Everything I've just been talking about. And you need to let go of your beliefs that um, everything doesn't happen for a reason. It does. Because today I sat in that beautiful space and I thought to myself, if we had moved to a different area, I would never have had it. I would never have had this. Because this came from a particular parish council just at the right time for 20 pounds a year, half an acre of land. And this time next year, all being well, hopefully I'm going to build a house on it. We don't know what's coming, none of us do. It could be, you never know. Come and visit. You can sit in the shed, you can meditate, you can help teach me how to plant vegetables. Okay, trust in your guru, that is the only sadhana. Trust in your higher power. I've got two today. Trust in your higher power. Trust in your guru. That is the only piece, the only way. As I said, maybe we don't know why this is happening. Maybe this is not all happening to liberate us, to prepare our land, to prepare our hearts for this hour and this hour. And then, wealth is really a means to work out dharma. If one uses it mainly for personal enjoyment, it is vainly spent. Wealth is really a means to work out your path, to work out dharma, to clear the path 
in order for you to move forward. It's good to have money and wealth and abundance. If one uses it merely for personal enjoyment, then it's vain expense. So it's all about helping each other, loving each other, growing our new world together with bartering and love. And guys, if you want to sponsor me on TV, uh, I just got a gift from the universe, uh, a tattoo base, which will keep me going for another month. <laughs> but I'm asking you, we're looking for sponsors, we're looking for donations to keep this going. You can donate to me on the PayPal, it's moving on theatre down below. Very, very grateful for that. Please subscribe, like, love, <laughs> share. Come on board Moving On TV. Become a sponsor. Uh, sponsors get everything from us, as you know. We love you lots. Take care, and I hope you enjoy the awakening. Bye. Where we go on, we go off.